Uh, so, good evening all. And this uh, series is about, uh, I'm slowly starting uh, basic class 12, class 12 also. In class 12, it's just about a project guidance. I've been getting a lot of mails asking for uh, how to do projects and give us a project ideas. Actually, it's a very, very simple uh, CBSE requirement for your class 12 project. So basically, you can first choose on what you want to do. For namesake, if you just want to do a project, yes, there are a lot of projects available in the internet. You can just download them. But the challenge is also in understanding the project because you will be asked viva questions from that. So you can basically, as per CBSE, it is not mandated to use SQL, but it is always better that you use SQL. So first is you have a... Today, I'm going to talk about the SQL project so how because that is the best that you can do and maybe next i will also tell you how to do project by using only files so depending on your school you can just choose because binary files csv files or practical record programs itself so i don't think that you can just submit it as a project anyway you can choose any one of the themes you can take choose a ticket reservation system you can use a hotel uh, menu card you can make so there are so many things that you can explore and 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 finally i think maybe by this month end or by next month, I will also make, a, I will also show you a project which we have made with using HTML tables also. You can just incorporate that also very easily in um, Python. So to get started with, I'm not sure, most of the schools might have started MySQL because it's very easy. So MySQL, I, I would go with the workbench version. So MySQL workbench is the first step. You have to install this. Uh, in the video description, I'll be giving you the link with which you can install MySQL Workbench very easily. This is your first step. So once you do this MySQL Workbench, to check if it has installed, I'll just show you how to check this. So there is, you can see on the screen, there's a MySQL Workbench. You can open that. And remember your password always. Do not forget the password because then it becomes again difficult. You have to uninstall and reinstall it. So let's not waste the time. So for me, it is already set up. So I'm going to my see this local instance here and sometimes it might show that the server is not running so if that is the case you can go to your services in your services app you can always check i will just click somewhere here in my services and type my so i can see that mysql and it is given at given as the startup type is manual so i can actually start it so once you start this service here, you can come back to my MySQL. See, no connection. It's, it is saying server status is stopped and no connection is established. And now it should change for me. So let's try. Let's check if the service has started. MySQL is running. Let me close it and open it once again. So maybe on a safer side, you can always start the service first and then you can come back here. So let's get inside. Okay, so that message is not there for us anymore. So you can just go back. You can have your own uh, file. So you can first say, show databases. If at all you're doing it for the first time, there'll be no database there for you. So for me, I have so many databases here, so showing everything for me, or you can, the first step, first SQL query that you will execute is a create database. So create database test or create database, right? So some database you can create and you can use it also here. You have to use the database. So if I want to use April, 2023, I have to use April, 2023. And inside this, you're going to create all your tables. So whatever tables you have to create, it has to be created here. And this, I'm assuming that you already have a knowledge of SQL. So once this is done, you can always come back to your main code. And we are trying to use our, so MySQL Workbench is perfectly installed. So second step is we have to install or interface MySQL and Python. So for that, you need pip. In the latest versions, this pip comes automatically with Python. So how do I check that? I have to go to my command prompt. So in my command prompt, wherever you are, you have to just type pip. So 
it's a python install installer it helps you to install all your the required packages here we have, we already know some packages we know that uh, math is a package pickle is a package so like that here it has to give you some message like the saying that if this message comes then pip is already there which means your path and all is proper so if you do not get this message right so then i have to check my path so when I check my path, I have to see that my Python and six scripts. See, I can see all my versions of Python are here. You can see programs, Python, Python 37, 32 and scripts. And only Python 37, 32 slash. So both of them you can include in your path. So how do I do it? So you, you can, you need not do it here. You have to definite, if at all it is not working. The first troubleshooter would be go to your system variables. And in here you have environment variables. Here you have, I will do actually both because I'm not very sure I have forgotten the actual use of user variables and system variables. 90% might be able to tell you better. But I would basically take the path variable here, click on edit. And if I want to change something, I have so many versions of Python. So all the versions I've included here, I have not removed it. I have Java. So whichever is the latest version, try to put it in the top for you. Same way. After you're done, done with it, also come here and change this path also. So both the paths, whether it is a user variable or a system variable, change both of them for a safer side. So this should include, as I said, you have to go to where your Python is installed. So how do I find it? Yes, go back to your idli and you just say file open. You can see that all your files are going to be stored under this directory. So you can just click on any folder, right click on them and say properties. This will show you where your Python is installed, right? So you can go to that and install till that and I include one more slash and put scripts also so that pip will be found out for you. Okay, so this is your second step. So you're going to do this checklist here by typing pip in your command prompt. And if at all it is not working, you're going to check your path in environment variables. So this is your troubleshooting tip for setting up the interface. So remember, you have to also have, in my case, it is Python 38 till this and also Python 38 with the scripts folder. Only if you have both, it's going to work for you. So now the path is all set. Let's install. So pip install mysql hyphen. There is no dot here connector there is also a mysql hyphen connector but we want the one specific for python so i have to say this so pip install is my keyword here it i have to do it in the command prompt i need not do it in the exact folder yeah it for me it is giving a shorter message saying the requirement is already satisfied because i've already installed this on my system so it, it asked me if I want to update it for you. It should take around a minute's time. It will install the package for you. So now I once I'm done with it. So the third step here is to do a pip install. MySQL hyphen connector hyphen Python. Now fourth step is check your idli. Go to your idli here and in the shell itself. You can just directly type import mysql dot connector. Remember, it is now it is dot and just leave, do nothing. It has to give you a prompt there saying that the statement is executed successfully. If at all there is no, it will say no module found, no module named mysql found, then it means there is some problem somewhere. Either you have not installed your mysql properly or your path is wrong that you have not installed your prep properly. There is some other error. So till you come to the stage, till you come to the stage is what is the tricky part here. So after that, it is going to be very, very easy to do this project. So till this is set up, I have just given the steps here, check idli and do import when I'm importing it is a dot here okay now let's come back to our program now I will all I'll open a program which we have I've already done so I will just show you the code because it's easy to also understand the code here right so these are all separate, separate functions. These are three mark questions. And now it is a fill in the fill in the blanks. They just give you empty blanks to fill in the board exam. So interfacing is not a very big, uh, big question for us in the board exam. 
But nevertheless, interfacing is definitely in your record. You will be writing two or three programs using parameterized queries. And remember, this time they've included parameterized queries. Till last year, it was hard-coded queries like this. Select star from student. That was the only query that we used to write. Insert directly, we can give the values. I've used two different types of parameterized queries. You can see that in my insert, I have used percentage yes style. So let me explain this. What I have done, I have my crude operations, right? Create, read, update, and delete. So I have written functions for each one of them because each of these functions is also one separate record program for you in your practicals. So first is select all. I have a table already there. Remember, this is a common syntax. You don't have to change anything. At the end of this video, I will give you this down, uh, file for download also. You can just uh, download this file and make changes according to your where all you have to change, you have to change it here. Your username might not, might be root itself, but password you have to change. Database has to be your database name. If you use a database called test, the database name has to be test here. If you do not use the database here, it's an optional parameter. Then you have to say the first statement here has to be use database should be your first step. Don't take that risk with the database name here itself. So now... I'm creating a cursor space. What's a cursor space? In simple terms, I will say I'm not going to go to the technical details of this. Cursor is that blinking thing, right? The the arrow, that line you're seeing blinking on the screen is actually the cursor. It's called a cursor. So in, in this context, a cursor is nothing but the space between your Python and SQL. You're going to exchange data, right? So for that, you have a space that is called as your cursor. So connection dot connection object name is CON here. They could give, if it's a fill in the blank in the exam, they could give anything they want. But you can use one constant name here, connection for connection object. Cursor is a function. So first is always there are going to be four steps in your select. The first is your command. Select star from whatever table name. My table name is student. So I'm executing the command. That is my second step. Third step is fetching everything. Fetch all will give all at once. I have different methods for this, which you have to study in your theory only. For each row, I'm going to print the row. So select function is very straightforward. I'm just reading everything from a table and displaying that no conditions here. When I'm coming to my insert, right, I'm creating. So insert into the table values and I'm giving four values here. I have to know the table structure to do this. I, I need to know that the table has roll number, name, marks and grade. So I'm entering all the details here. Now, this is one way of doing it. I'm just saying I'm creating a tuple with the data is equal to A, B, C, D and I'm saying correct cursor dot execute command, command data. This is the first way. I have done the second one using the format because both are given in your uh, using format is also there in your syllabus. So in format, you can remove, you can see that I have just said update student set marks is equal to something where roll number is equal to something. And that is, I just said dot format A comma B. So instead of marks, A will go here in this bracket and roll number is equal to B. So it will be translated as update student set marks is equal to A where roll number is equal to B, right? So that is what I'm getting from the user and I'm using the format for it. Same four steps, get the values, command, execute the command and commit. Commit I'm using for only insert, update and delete because these changes have to be reflected in the database again. If I don't use the commit, these details will not be stored in the database. Same way have my delete statement, delete from student where roll number is equal to whatever, only one parameter. So it's just format E. Now I'm going on and on in my loop where I'm saying enter one, create two, read, update, delete, and exit. So each option I've given the user, I can also extend this. I can uh, display the details of toppers. I can use different select queries. So I can search for a student. All these are your own functionalities, which you can keep on making to make the project as big as possible. So let me run this. So first let me, uh, because details are already there, let me read and check this. So there are so many details here. I can see that so many values are already there. So let me try to update a value. Let me give a roll number. Enter the, first it's asking for the marks. Okay, 60. Let's say roll number 11. Now I am trying to read. Yes, the first value has changed to 60. Right. So I can, like that, I can execute all the options and all the options will work for this. So this is a very simple project where you are using all the crude operations, right? You are using basic, basic project this is. So in the project, you can, you can also change it into books. 
you can say books or author names you can you can make it as big as possible then finally if you want to instead of printing the result it could be like an inventory management system where after you finish off the entire building you can generate a bill as a text file possible as a csv file possible all this is possible and that is where your actual knowledge comes into play and that is use the vacation i would always want you to have 15 more days at least for vacation all of you so i would definitely want you all to try a good project and complete your project within this 15 days so that you can concentrate on your other subjects and the theory and exams once june starts right so see you all then I, ho I hope it will be useful for all of you and I will try to make some more videos when I find time on different projects that my own students are also doing. So it will give you an idea of how to do your projects. See you then. Bye-bye.